things that can be a bit tricky in the bush is trying to figure out what food to take with you. Now, you know, you can go all out and go to town and you can buy a dehydrator and do your own thing, or you can buy pre-made dehydrated foods from camping shops. But you know, I'm just gonna run you through some very basic, easy things that you can find in your own supermarket and also in your Asian food supermarket. One of the key things is to do all your fussing beforehand at home. Do all your fussing and your prepping in your own kitchen. And then when you get out into the bush, all you have to do is kick back, put your feet up in front of the fire and enjoy yourself. One of the things that I do that I found is so easy is to actually eat from a bag. So again, the Ziploc bags are your best friends. And what I have in this bag is two wheat bix I've got milk powder in here and I've also already put in a little bit of sugar as well. So then all I need to do in the morning is pop in some water into the bag and then I just eat straight out of the bag. Another option for breakfast that's really popular in the bush is obviously going to be your porridge sachets. Now porridge in the bush is so hearty and warmy and loads of low GI good stuff and all that kind of thing. But one of the painful things about cooking porridge in the bush is actually having to clean your billy afterwards. So one of the handy things you can do is actually pop your sachet of porridge into your billy at night before you go to bed, cover it with water, pop the lid back on, and then all you have to do in the morning is just warm it through. It doesn't actually cook on the sides or get all yucky. And if you whack in some dried fruit at the same time, the dried fruit puffs up and rehydrates and it's all sweet and juicy and fruity in the morning too. So you get this wonderful warm, fruity, porridgey kind of goodness. So that's a really great thing as well. I'm not that creative. Some other people have great ideas and actually that's the best thing. It's the best way to learn is when you go out bush, just sort of look over your shoulder and look what everyone else is doing and get some ideas of what they do for food. So one of the things I've found works really well is in my billy, it's a very small billy, is that rice crackers or corn crackers actually fit right into the billy so they don't break, so that's handy. So I put my corn crackers in there and then with the crackers what you can have is obviously you've got some salmon or tuna sachets, they're really handy and again it's good not having tins that you don't have to carry out again. Of course you've got your little baby cheeses and salami. Now there's two types of salami at the supermarket. You'll find there's salami that's heat treated and salami that's non-heat treated. Now this is the non-heat treated. Okay, so non-heat treated salami doesn't need to be refrigerated. You just need to keep it fairly cool and out of the sun. And a little treaty dessert at the end of lunch. Now this, I've, I've only done this once or twice and it kind of looks pretty gross. Again, a Nalgene jar that you get from a camping store. I've pre-mixed up peanut butter and jam. It looks gross, but it tastes great. I have a little saying, and the saying is that anything tastes good in the bush. Now, I don't normally drink cup of soup, but I've got to say that in the bush, a cup of soup before dinner is awesome. But you know, if I want a bit of variation, miso is great too. And again, we're looking at food that's lightweight, things that aren't gonna weigh us down in our packs. Dinner in the bush can be awesome. You can make laksa, you can do all sorts of things, but the easiest thing to do is to get the good old bog standard pasta and sauce. You can go to a camping shop and buy dehydrated meals for about 12 or 13 bucks, or you can buy one of these dirt cheap, three bucks or something like that. But what you want to do is you want to add a little bit extra to these because to be honest, the flavours are a little bit bland. So what I do before I leave home, again, it's about doing your fussing at home, a Ziploc bag, again, I pop my pasta and sauce into the bag, but then I add in a whole lot of extra things. So I've added in some dehydrated vegetables. Now I've dehydrated some of these myself, but others you can just buy at the supermarket. So I've got um, surprise peas or dehydrated peas. Another really good obvious one is dried mushrooms. Now um, Asian shops have these and they're fantastic in your Asian supermarket. And also they've got um, fried shallots, so that's a bit of a favourite. And then to make the flavours sing a little bit more, what I'll throw into the bag is some extra herbs and spices. So I might put in some chilli powder, 
um, or even things like you know the garlic garlic herbs things like that mixed herbs if I'm having an, an Italian one you might even feel that you need some protein and a lot of people do feel like that in the bush so one option of course just like lunchtime you can whack in some tuna or some salmon you might even want to dehydrate your own um, meat some chicken some beef that kind of thing and you can pop that in as well then what you want to do when you get to camp is obviously pop it in your billy, cover it with water, you pop it on the fire or on your gas stove, and then you just eat it straight out of the billy. Obviously, you'll need some of these, which are billy lifters, because your billy is going to be hot, and you can just eat up. You save your washing up, you save space in your pack, because you don't have to take a plate with you, and it's, everything's just compact, it's great. I use different coloured bags. So I'll have, say on a long trip of six or seven days, I might have all my lunches in this bag and all my dinners in this bag. And so straight away I can get to camp, unpack, set up, get the water, grab the bag with all my dinner and my wine and head to the fire and relax.